Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast is proudly sponsored by New Vision. My team, Kanda, power. I love the power. power, power. I love the power. power, power. I love Hi, and welcome power. to the Big Footy Port Adelaide podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to all things Port Adelaide Footy Club. I'm your host, Macca19, and joining me as always as co host is Fishing Rico 4. How are you, mate? Very good, King Macca. What about yourself? Good, buddy, as always. Good. And joining us for the first time on the podcast, he's a bit of a regular on our forum. Uh, we're talking with El Scorcho. How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on. Good. Absolute pleasure. Now, as we do with all the first timers on the podcast, let's find out a little bit about your port supporting background. Um, how did you come to support the club? Uh, I'm uh, pretty dyed in the wool. Uh, both sides of my family uh, were very, uh, very passionate Port supporters, apart from my dad who supported North. Uh, right. But yeah, he, all his uh, brothers and sisters and all my mum's side of the family were uh, Port Adelaide. So I've been going to Alberton as long as I can remember. And uh, yeah, never can, I can't remember a time where I wasn't a Port supporter. So yeah. Beautiful. Now we always ask three questions um, yep. to the new people. Um, what was your first game? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Uh, again, uh, I can remember going to games at Alberton as a kid, but uh, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you uh, the first game I went to. In probably the late 80s when I was three or four years old. Yep. Nice one. And your favourite match? It's hard to go past uh, the uh, Monfrey's Bounce Showdown last year, but uh, I always say to this one, the, uh, the Essendon win in 2001 at Footy Park, uh, where we sort of announced ourselves uh, on the stage as a, as a team that could compete with the really good teams. Yes. And that was probably the start for me of our, our dominance over the next few years. So probably Such that in 2001. Yeah, it was. Such a great game. I watched that actually uh, on the weekend. I watched that for the first time in a couple of years. And I still get spine tingles when uh, we had some of those great goals. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And also your favourite port player? Uh, Chad Wingard at the moment. Oh, uh, sort of present. I'll say Chad Wingard. Just uh, can't believe he fell to us. He's got so many tricks, and um, yeah, you know, if, if he never gets better from where he is now, he's still going to be a champion over the course of his career. Uh, his scope for improvement still a fair bit as well. So, uh, past is an easy one. Uh, Warren Tradray uh, can't go past him. Absolute champion. Spot on. Good stuff. Now we might jump straight into our love hate for the week. This is where we name something that we loved and something that we hated about the Port Adelaide Footy Club this week. Uh, Rick, I might start with you, mate. What was your love and your hate? Well, talking about Wingard, I loved his goal last night. I thought that was pretty good. But my my actual love um, this week is uh, Jasper Pittard. Um, you know, as you know, I've been a a big supporter of uh, Two Dads for a while, and yeah. uh, I, you know, and he he delivered and he showed what I could see with his run and carry last night and and his line breaking ability. But I think he. Uh, I'm sure you would agree with this, Macca. His uh, delivery was first class, you know, and I think he really stepped it up uh, uh, last year. And from last year, my apologies. And uh, and I think it also shows to us as supporters uh, that sometimes we can be a bit hasty on players after uh, after one poor game, or or our expectations aren't the same, and we want them dropped and calling for them to drop. And I mean, even Dom Concisi was a little bit similar last week as well. I thought he was serviceable, serviceable last night, and maybe we should be a bit more reluctant just to call put players on the chopping block so uh, quickly. Oh look, if he plays like that every week, I will be loving it. I mean, he he was pretty well. We'll, we'll talk about him later on, of course, but. Um, yeah, I'll be eating humble pie if he plays like that every game this year. That's for sure. And uh, what about your hate? Um, my hate is um, White. Not that I hate him, but I'm just a little bit frustrated. I have a higher expectation of him. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about his uh, line-breaking ability. And uh, I think Triby mentioned today an example of Matt White with Roden about, oh, you know, if he got that other 10 possessions. And I think that's spot on the money. Um, you know, I want to see him being that, um, that line-breaking 15 to 20 possession player and I know it's only the pre-season and he's uh, got a new role in the team and everything else but that was my expectation of him and and I haven't really seen that enough yet to be convinced of that yeah uh, I thought White had um, had a fantastic uh, danger field moment uh, during the game where he hit that pack really hard took yeah. the ball out ran towards goal and then shanked it for a point I thought that was uh, <laughs> classic danger field so yeah. 
but yeah, he probably probably didn't get involved enough. Um, little bits and pieces were okay, but he, he was pretty unsighted for most of the game. Yeah, I'm not sure if he got. Uh, I need to check the stats really on his time on ground because it didn't really seem like he. Maybe he had a, a fair bit of time off the ground. I'm not too sure, but yeah, certainly expected more. Um, all right, El Scorcho, what was your love and hate for this week? Uh, my love for this week. Sorry, oh, mate. I, I can go. tell you that. Seven, uh, 71% time on ground. 71%. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's pretty standard, I think. Yeah, so he was yeah. out there, definitely. Just yeah, he was out involved. there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. Uh, my right. love, my love for this week was uh, Pollock. Uh, basically, I didn't get to catch the game last week, so this is the first time I'd seen him live. And I knew we'd be getting a player that uh, had, had really good disposal. We'd heard all about that, and we knew he was a uh, probably was described as a good outside player. Uh, what really struck me was uh, his work uh, inside. So his work in traffic, his work in the packs. Uh, he worked really well in our stoppage setups, um, and yeah, just seemed really composed, made good decisions. Uh, Pretty much a complete midfielder. Uh, we absolutely got a bargain there uh, with pick 14. There's no way we would have got a better player. I can't believe we got him. It was very, very lucky, and we're very lucky to have him. So. Absolutely. He'll be my life yeah. for the week. Yeah, good call. Yeah. And your hate? My hate for this week was uh, Schultz's injury, obviously. Not just the injury. Uh, they're saying it might only be a few weeks. But uh, just the heart and the mouth stuff where we're thinking, how are we going to go with you know Butcher and Westhoff? Uh, leading the line uh, in terms of key position forwards for the rest of the season if Schultz had been out for a long time. Uh, Westhoff was obviously very good, but you'd love to use him in that you know, free-roaming role where he can pretty much read the play and go, over, go wherever he wants. And Butcher probably struggled to work himself into the game last night. Uh, his one-on-one -on -one contest, he didn't probably win too many. He did have a good uh, uh, mark on the lead, which is unusual for him, which is really good to see, and yep. kick the goal from that. Uh, so hopefully that's something he... Uh, He's developing and he can work with Schultz on because Schultz is probably the best the best at taking a, a mark on the lead and kicking a goal. So uh, hopefully Butcher develops. But, yeah, just a little bit scary uh, seeing Schultz get injured and what that might mean for our season. I'd probably say if there's one thing that can derail our season, it would be Schultz getting a long-term injury. All right. My love for this week was uh, breaking our all-time membership record. Uh, I had a look this morning and we had just over 42,400 members. Such a great thing for the club. I mean, we're, we're going into Adelaide Oval on a high. We're, we're going bang. The supporters are getting on board. Um, I mean, if we have a good start to the year, I mean, it's quite possible we'll have 44,000 members before the before round one. If we start the year in great fashion, I don't think there's any doubt that we'll hit 50,000 members at some point during the year, um, which will be a great thing for our club at the moment. Um, my hate was uh, probably... Overall, just a, a little bit of sloppiness last night, but in particular, the drop marks. I don't think I've seen us drop that many marks in a game of footy before. I mean, just simple chess marks. Ebert dropped about six on his own. Schultz dropped probably the easiest chess mark I've ever seen, and that cost a goal. Yeah. Um, just really wanted to see them maybe a little bit more cleaner. Um, and I think if we were a little bit more cleaner, we probably would have won by maybe another four or five goals on the night. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree with that. Uh, Ebert was frustrating all night. He was working really well, getting into good positions and just dropping marks and costing himself. So the Schultz yeah. mark was almost unheard of. I, uh, I had to rewind and, and watch it again because I don't think yeah. I've ever seen him drop a chess mark in his career. So No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we might as well go straight into the review. Um, obviously, we played Essendon last night at Etihad Stadium. Um, after a pretty sluggish start that saw us down by 24 points halfway through the first quarter, we really took control of the game from that point on. We ended up winning by 25 points. El Scorcher, I might uh, jump to you, mate, and just give us a quick overview of the game. Okay, yeah, so basically, as you said, we, we started pretty slow. We weren't really running, and we were a bit sloppy with our skills. Um, we were doing pretty well in the stoppage, stoppages, I felt, uh, but that wasn't really translating well to outside uh, play because of skill errors and, and poor decisions. Um, Danaher's height early on got the better of us a little bit and he was, he was able to work into the game really well uh, but he was cut out pretty much after quarter time um, and uh, Cleary and Homch really worked well into the game um, it was fantastic to see two key position def defenders over you know compared to the last few years two key, two key position defenders that were so composed and assured kicking the footy and that really stood out to me all game um, really good decision makers really safe as houses kicking and they were both very good defensively as well Yep. Um, we basically upped the ante in the uh, in the second quarter and Essendon didn't go with us. So we clicked into gear. Um, we kept dropping marks, unfortunately, but our, our decision-making and our skills definitely picked up. 
Um, what stood out for me as the game went on uh, was that our, and this was something that we did last season as well, our uh, freewheeling creativity when we're moving the ball forward. Uh, we don't have one avenue to go. We have, you know, everyone's an avenue to go. Um, and, and every goal for us is, is a little bit different, which makes us really hard to defend. It's not a matter of cutting out one or two or three players because across the ground we've got so many players who can create and can kick goals. Um, and then just to finish off, we, we iced the game really well uh, at the end. Um, really good composure and really good skills to finish the game out, which I thought was really good. Yep. So, yeah. Good stuff. What did you think of uh, structure uh, with the three tall forwards um, and how you saw that playing out throughout the game? Overall, pretty good. Uh, overall, pretty good. Uh, when we were uh, when we did click into gear, we were, we were hitting targets pretty well. Um a butcher seemed to play out the ground a little bit at the start, which was which was all right. He was probably not getting on the lead, and he was one on one in his contests. But the way we were moving the ball was pretty well. Uh, I'd probably prefer Westhoff um, against a tougher opponent to be playing a bit more free roaming, whereas he seemed to be a bit more up forward. Um, I know we played Boke up forward at the start as well, which was obviously just to give him a rest up there. So overall, I didn't think it was too bad. Um, yeah, it was, it was really good to see, and it was a continuation of what we saw last year. I felt. Yeah, we had 20 marks to five inside 50, so I think it definitely worked. Yeah. Um, I think it's something that we probably missed out on a little bit last year. We were generally playing two up forward, I think, when Butcher was out of the team, and, and yeah. we, we weren't really giving another taller chance to go up there. I guess maybe if we had Redden for the second half of last year, um, that might have been a little bit different as well. Yeah, look, I think uh, you compare it to the Essendon game last year where they had Hooker take something like 10 marks in our defensive 50 because it was Schultz against three tolls and all of our forwards were giving away 10, 15 centimetres and it killed us. I think the difference you saw last night where we had three tolls up there uh, and they weren't able to just chop us out and, and rebound uh, was, a, it was a really massive difference. Yeah. Rick, what were your thoughts, mate? Yeah, I think it was um, it was mentioned on the radio on the way home and uh, and then on on the TV as well. And uh, I thought the first quarter it did show maturity that we were able to uh, change it up after being uh, behind and not having the momentum with us. Um, it's also a bit of a concern again that you know we sort of are letting a team uh, dominate us for a fair patch of a quarter. Uh, it didn't really hurt us uh, through inaccuracy, uh, but we were I couldn't see the structural change on TV, uh, but I thought we just seemed to be getting our hands on the ball more so in the midfield um, through the tap-outs. I think that might have been Renew's influence. I thought Loby was a little bit down uh, last night, uh, but we, we definitely uh, started to win more clearances, and I think it was one noticeable aspect of that was Robbie Gray. I, I posted yeah. on the forum quickly today. I thought he was very, very clean. Uh, which was uh, you know, a very harsh criticism of me last year with coming back from injury. Uh, so it's completely understandable. But you know that was the Robbie Gray last night that I that I know. Uh, no fumbling, very good in the contested situation, and he extracted a, a lot of ball for us. In, I thought anyway. And uh, once we started winning it out of the centre, um, we had great play. We, as you mentioned today, Mac are on the forum as well. Uh, we had a lot of runs streaming from defence or through the centre of the ground, uh, which resulted in those uh, 20 marks inside 50 because of fantastic delivery by uh, not just Polak but the whole team. Uh, it was noticeable in the uh, as the game went on. We we seemed to have a strategy there where we were kicking uh, deep into the pocket. Uh, which might have been a bit of a defensive strategy to our key forwards to to stop the outlet ball um, coming out, and we sort of thwarted that quite well. And I don't know, um, you know, if we were just pre- uh, practicing a set game plan there, and we did it over and over, but it, it seemed a little bit repetitive, um, and also it's probably a little bit too negative because you don't want to be taking a lot of your set shots from the pockets. You'd want to hopefully go uh, dead out in front. But I thought defensively after that first 18 minutes as a group and as a team uh, they were fantastic um, you know so you got Cleary and and Homsch and Jonas um, you know they were really noticeable that they were working well together with our small defenders and yeah. um, you know and Homsch I thought his smothering last night was fantastic and I don't know about you guys but it actually uh, brought back memories of of Chad Corns a little bit, the way the effort was going on. And then um, with him and and then uh, obviously the Mark Williams uh, coaching strategy and everything else. But I thought his second efforts were fantastic. I guess uh, something I want to touch on and get your opinions on would be the start to the game. I went, Essendon probably 
blew themselves a pretty big lead with their bad kicking for goal in the end. I mean, there was a period of about, I think, 12 minutes where we just couldn't get it out of uh, out of our defensive 50, and they couldn't kick a goal. So it was just this sort of rebounding uh, back, having a shot, missing, you know, trying to get it out. We couldn't do it. Um, what were the reasons behind our poor start, do you think? Um Basically, for me, I think poor decision making and poor skills. Uh, I don't think we had. You know, they were pressuring us a little bit, but I don't think. I, mean, I remember thinking a lot of the time it was uh, it was just someone kicking straight to an Essendon player or kicking poorly to a contest. Um, we weren't running very hard, and, and Essendon are, are a really good test for us because they probably play a similar style of game to us, where they run and run and run, um, and they run over teams. And I think they've probably beaten us in the past because they've been better at that than we are, um, and so. Because of that, there's just more of them around the ball all the time. Um, so there's, I, I think they were running a lot harder at the start. They definitely came out of the blocks a lot harder than we did. Um, but then also we just turned the ball over uh, at the start, which which we fixed probably by that quarter time, maybe even a little bit before. But, um, yeah, just, just poor skills and probably not running hard enough. Similar to last year where we had a few games where we just didn't come out of the blocks. We almost need to uh, you know, play a quarter in the change rooms before we start just so we can get, get ourselves into gear. That's it. So. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think it was probably um, poor di- sort of first or second disposal from the clearances. I think we were really struggling with. We were getting our hands on the ball, um, but generally turning it over from the clearance, and that was leading to very quick um, disposal into our defensive 50 from Essendon. Um, and we certainly did sort of fix that as the game went on, um, where we were really taking the ball away and getting some really clean, very deep clearances into our own forward 50, which was great to see. Um, what about you, Rick? What did you think? Yeah, I just thought we got uh, we got smashed a little bit in the middle. Um, we, like you said, we we probably just weren't efficient enough with our ball use and a bit sloppy, and uh, and then we were just lacking a bit of structure. We we just seemed to be a, a little bit wishy washy with our game plan in the first ten minutes. There, we we were just sort of uh, chipping it around and not really doing anything with the ball, and and uh, it was almost that west off west off double goal that really uh, woke us up and and got us going. Did yeah. you guys? Did you? Sorry about that, mate. Did you guys notice um, uh, a Phil Walsh influence in the team, or was it not really noticeable? I think I noticed definitely a, a change in how we were setting up at, at our midfield stoppages, and certainly where we were directing our taps, um, how we were directing them, and where our players were standing. Um, it seemed to work fantastically, and, and whatever Essendon tried to do to stop it, they just couldn't stop it. Yeah, um, as I said earlier, I thought even when we were sloppy at the start, we were getting our hands on the ball first, um, and then we were turning it over. But obviously the stoppage setups were really good, and we just smashed us in an all-game, I felt, yeah. from the stoppages. Uh, Loby didn't play that well around the ground, but he was very good at um, yeah, very very good with his tap work, and even Rudolph was quite good with his tap work, which was good to see. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that was probably the best game I've seen Renouf play for quite a long time, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I I thought he was injured, actually. I didn't know whether he was going to be in, but uh, his tap work was fantastic. He uh, he, he played really well against uh, a Ryder, who, who I think is a pretty good ruckman and is pretty pretty athletic. So, uh, yeah, it was really good to see. And, you know, it, it gave me a little bit of faith that if, um, if Loby does go down, we, another one of our key players that we do have a, a couple of good backups in, in Redden and Renouf, who can, uh, who can actually, you know, support with the tap work enough that we can we can still be a good stoppage side, which is really yep. good. Something mm. something else I wanted to discuss with you guys was probably um, how you saw our game style sort of mature as the night went on and, and what were the differences between last year? I didn't see much difference uh, between last year, Macca. I, I thought we, we really tried to, to push back hard again and run forward. Uh, aggressively run forward with our, our line breaking and uh, and look that's a that's a great style of footy that I want to see because that's going to split games open. Uh, you might have more insight around the contest which we were just talking about before, um, but uh, I didn't notice. And back to Renouf, the only thing I'd like to say is uh, I just want a bit more influence around the ground just from a, any of our Rutman. That's all. But I guess if they're making contests, they're doing that. But uh, back to the game style. You know, hard gut running was still there, line breaking was there, and adding Pollock to the mix, plus with Pittard from defence, um, you know, that's going to give us some some great line breaking run, and it's going to be impossible now to really tag every player in that team, which is going to be to all of the players' benefit. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I was, I'm in complete agreement there. I thought, you know, as I said earlier in the review, that what stood out to me was just how we we freewheel on offense. There's no, um, there's no set way. You know, we don't always keep the shorts. We don't have a couple of prime movers. I, you know, I think a few years ago we used to have Pierce, and we used to try and go through Pierce every time because he was our only really good deliverer of the ball, um, who who could you know creatively hit a target going forward sometimes. Whereas now I feel like we've got to make you know maybe seven or eight midfielders who who can win the ball inside, who can win the ball outside, who can hit a target, who can make a good decision. Um, and we've got so many weapons up for Westhoff and Monfries and Schultz. Um, and, and then the midfielders as well, including Wingard in that, 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 uh, that can create and can score. Um, and, and I think that's a continuation of last year, uh, as Rick said. I don't think it's something that's necessarily new. I'd say probably that what, what the only thing I saw that was new was uh, the stoppage work. Um, which, which seemed to be really good, uh, which was, I don't know, whether it was Walsh's influence or just the development of last year. But either way, it was really good to see us, us smash them in the stoppages all game. Yeah, I think probably the main difference that I saw was probably our patience in trying to switch the play. Uh, it was almost Choco-esque um, how we were, were quite patient in going one way. If that didn't work, we'd go back the other way and we would keep doing it until a gap opened up and then we'd just go bang straight through the middle. Um, that's what I really liked. Um, we used our pace to advantage a lot. It was almost sort of like a, it was certainly a, a slight upgrade on our two, 2013 game plan without seeing anything too much different. Um, certainly agree with the fact that, you know, we've got so many good midfielders now that can get the ball, that can win their own ball and also receive on the outside and deliver it well. Um, and I think just the, the introduction of Polek just on his own, has been so fantastic with his pace and his bowl use. Um, and we, we saw glimpses from Impey with that as well. And if White gets his game going and, and does become that sort of, I don't know, 16 to 20 disposal player and he can hit the contest hard and, and run away with the bowl, um, you know, we'll, we'll be hard to stop at times this year. Yeah, mm. yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying, Macker, about the switching. And I, th- I think a lot of that's come from having a lot more composure and uh, and kicking ability and decision making in defence. I think probably over our, our bad seasons over the last five years, we've just turned the ball over coming out of defence so much. And so we probably tried to switch, but we just kicked it to an opposition player half the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, with Chaplin, with you know P- early Pittard, with Jacobs when he was there. But even even the players who are, who are playing well now, we're, we're doing that early on. So it's it's really good to see a lot of composure. And I think uh, yeah. As you say, uh, that manifests itself in in really patient switching and the ability to to read the play and attack when it's the right time, not just not just slamming on the boot. Yeah. So. No, you're right. And I actually now that you brought it up, I do remember in the last quarter watching our our possession game plan, and I actually thought it has stepped up from last year. Last year we were we couldn't hold it for two minutes without coughing it up and exposing the ball, and uh, we seemed to be a lot more calm with holding the ball last night. Yeah. Yep. And we were, and we were hitting targets, you know, pretty hard targets yep. as well. So it was good to see. Might as well go on to uh, onto the best players now. Rick, I'll start with you, mate. Who were your best players? Oh well, who do you reckon, uh, Macca? Do you, do you reckon Jasper would have been I up there? Big Jasper, mate. Yeah, yeah Jasper. absolutely. Well, twenty nine disposals, eighty two point eight percent disposal efficiency. Everyone was talking about uh, Pollock, and I mean, Pollock was noticeable. 23 disposals, 78.3% disposal efficiency. I was actually going to have them as equal best on ground until I noticed Jasper's uh, disposal efficiency was uh, a little bit higher or equal to. So I thought he, I thought he was clearly stand out with Jared uh, quite behind him. Kane, again, was serviceable, and, and Justin uh, continued on his early season form from last year to this year, which is fantastic. Um, again, as I, as I mentioned, I thought Robbie Gray really stood out for me um, in the centre as well and around the ground. It's, it's great to see him playing like that. And, you know, we're going to be a much stronger uh, stronger side for him in the back to his crisp form. And uh, I thought notable mentions were uh, Tom Cleary and Homsch uh, in defence. You know, still two young guys that were very, very serviceable against bigger opposition. And the other one, I, even though he didn't really have too much, I've got to say... Uh, Jarman Impey, he, he's a smooth mover. Doesn't he just look over the ground running? Doesn't he just look like a real smooth mover? He does. He and does, he, absolutely, yeah. 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 Nice. Well, what about you, El Scorcho? Who are your best players? Uh, yeah, again, it's hard to go past Pollock and Pittard. They were both fantastic. 
Um, yeah, you know, uh, Pittard obviously cops a lot of flack on the on the forum and around from supporters. But uh, if he's developing into the sort of player we saw last night, uh, that's a, another massive weapon we have in terms of moving the ball forward. Um, he's just creative and he breaks lines. And I think we saw that when he when he first uh, came on the scene, but then he had some injuries and he had some issues with uh, form and, and uh, hitting targets. Uh, but just to see that kind of game from him is very encouraging. Uh, Pollock, obviously, I touched on earlier with my my love for the week. Um, just uh, inside, outside, uh, really composed, hits targets, even even hard targets. Uh, that's that's absolutely fantastic to see, and I think he's a, an absolute lock for for round one now. Um, oh, Westhoff, yeah, 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 that's right. So Westhoff, obviously, very good as well. Um, played mainly at four, but you just see uh, he probably dropped a few marks, but so did everyone. But you just see the way he reads the game, um, which has always been his strength. He's a very intelligent player, and he just reads the play so well and gets in good positions. Um, in terms of young players, I had uh, Cleary and Homsch as well. Uh, as I touched on earlier, they just so composed when they got the ball. Uh, they competed very well against some decent forwards, um, and I, I felt really beat them. Um, which was great. Uh, the other, the other one I liked, the other young guy I liked was Wines. I thought he was really good uh, early on in the packs as well. Um, did a few good things out of that really good smother, which I think led to a goal. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just, just you know, good to see that he hopefully won't have any kind of second year blues. I thought, thought he was really good, um, really good in the middle again. So those are my best players. Yeah. Look, it was all about the two Js. I think uh, Pittard and Pollock. Um, Jasper, I mean, he was almost like a completely different player last night. He was hitting targets, he was taking big grabs, he was making the right decisions. I don't know if it was more of the McMillan side coming through than the Pittard side, but <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. But I, I think it was clearly the best game I've seen him play um, whilst at Port Adelaide. Um, he just controlled the play, knew what to do. His delivery, you know, just his work rate as well, pushing back. I think he had eight uh, rebound 50s and five inside 50s. So he, he was doing a lot of running last night. Um, and look, if he becomes that player where he does play further up the field, I think that's a fantastic thing. Um, Polek, just such a wonderful all-round game. Uh, again, I'm so impressed with his hardness at the bowl. Again, I think I've said it every week now. It's not something that we were, you know, we were really expecting. I don't think, but um, just his classy use of the bowl, especially under pressure. I mean, he's running full pace and hitting ridiculous targets every time. Um, he was going at 100% for the first half. Um, that goal he kicked, the super goal, was fantastic. Um, I'm surprised no one's mentioned Broadbent yet. I thought he was j- almost best on. Um, I thought he controlled the game across half back. I thought he was the key yeah. in getting us back into the game with his with his marking and, and sort of his general like play from defence. Um, and I think he's going to be a real big key player for us this year, playing across half back. Um, young guys, yeah, we, we've spoken about Cleary. I thought he was excellent. Definitely the best game I've seen him play. He killed Winderlick. Um, he played well as the free man for a time as well and used the ball really well. I think he's another that's sort of quick, tall, you know, almost like the prototype sort of uh, mid-sized defender now. Um, Wines was fantastic. He just goes 100% all the time. He uses the ball well. He knows how to deliver it. He, he always picks the right... Uh, the right option as well. I think he's in for a big year. And Jarman Impey, he, he didn't really do anything after quarter time, but it didn't really matter. Um, the two or three glimpses that we saw were, were just spot on, were just brilliant. Yeah, I think probably the uh, the best thing about the the best players, as we mentioned them, is there's no there's no Boak, there's no Hartlett, there's no uh, Lobie, there's no Schultz. Um, those guys were, I mean, they, they, were, they were quiet, but they contributed, um, but they probably didn't dominate like they can. So yeah. to, to have such a good win without any of our, I mean, maybe apart from Westhoff, any of our um, players who were considered our better, our better players really having too much to do with it was really good to see. Um, oh, you know, it's good to see, yeah. yeah, it's good to see Wingard come off, uh, come out of the, the sub vest and uh, I think he got 12 touches and a goal or something like that, you know, and just... Just, just knows how in. to hit his average every time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no matter um, what he does. It's always yeah. that sort of 11 or 12 touches and, and a goal a half. It's great. That's right. Mm. Those, those, those really good players didn't really get out of second gear and yet we still had a very comfortable win with a lot of contributors. So that was really I mean, good I to see. I don't think Hartlett even got out of first gear. Like, no, you know, yeah. He was just walking around, <laughs> but he wouldn't. Yeah. He wouldn't have even had a shower after the game. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. What about? Um, I guess one disappointing thing. Uh, I thought I haven't seen really any improvement in Butcher's ball drop um, from 
previous seasons to this season. I would have been hoping the club and him would have been working on that. Uh, is that a concern for you guys? Uh, yeah, look, I, I think a, a bit of butchers is just uh, well, his problem is just confidence. So, I mean, I wonder, you know, we, we've seen him kick, you know, lots of goals in a row with no behind. So he obviously can do it, but it is obviously a technical issue. I think when he's, um, when he's a bit more confident, it comes a bit more naturally to him. Um, I thought, you know, I mean, he kicked one good goal from a mark and lead, which is something he's almost never done. You know, he's usually taking yeah. pack marks or or kind of crumbing goals, which is odd for a big guy. But he got a really good lead where uh, Westhoff put on a really good block for him to get free on the lead and, and took a mark on the lead and kicked the goal. So I'm, I'm hoping yeah. they uh, they highlight that when they're talking to him after the game and, and he can bring more of that as the season goes on because he, he'll be key to us uh, moving up the ladder this year. Yeah. I think it is an issue, but uh, it might be a controllable issue. I mean... For years, Treadray was always criticised for his kicking at goal and um, his ball drop and that sort of thing. But, you know, he's still yeah. got the job done. I guess with mm. Butcher, I think it's all to do with confidence. Um, you know, I think if he gets a good start, if he kicks the first one, I think he's going to be in for, for good games. I think if he misses the first one or two shots he has, I think it's uh, it's not going to be pretty in mm. those sort of games, yeah. I think. Yeah, I agree. There was a... Um Another observation which I think relates to the interchange cap and where the game's heading, um, these were the players that had uh, over 80% time on ground. You had Tom Jonas, uh, Jack Homsch, uh, Tom Clory, uh, Justin Westhoff, and where's the other one? Uh, John Butcher. So there's a bit of a commonality there, and yep. uh, which is what we were all thinking, that the tall boys are going to be uh, stationed out on the ground a lot longer and the mids are going to be the ones that are rotating. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, I think right. we had 125 changes for the game, which is, I think, uh, what's the limit this year? Is it 30 a quarter? Yeah, 120. Yeah. Yeah, so we went a, li- a little bit over, but I guess they'll, uh, they'll allow that in the pre-season. Yeah. So they're not, they're not enforcing that rule in the preseason, are they? Obviously. Well, I think I they've think got so. the uh, they've got the six players on the bench and the two subs, so it might be a little bit harder to do, uh, given that it's the preseason and people are trying to get uh, you know game time into kids and and try out game plans or something. Maybe that's why they're not doing it. Mm. All right. Well, we might as well uh, have a quick discussion about what we want to see against St Kilda in a couple of weeks' time. Um, we'll be playing at Albert and Oval. Uh, the Magpies are playing their first trial game for the year that day as well. I think that starts at 9.30 a.m., a bit of an early start. Uh, I think the main game starts at 12.30. Uh, what do we want to see against St Kilda? A full team. I reckon we want to see our, our full and strongest squad out there. And uh, I would be hoping that we... Uh, we really dominate the game, uh, you know, and are cleaner than what we were last night. So, you know, if we were a bit cleaner with our disposal and uh, and our usage and our marking, I, I think we would have won by a bit more. So yep. we tidy tidy that up in good conditions, and uh, I'd like to see a, a very dominant display. That's what I'd be hoping for. Yep. Uh, I'd basically, as we were talking earlier about the start, I'd, I'd want us to be five or six goals up at quarter time rather than five or six goals down halfway through the first quarter. Um, our start is really important. Uh, you know, we've got a, a really uh, you know interesting start to the season where we play games that we should win if we play well, but they're definitely uh, challenges for us. So a team like St Kilda, who are probably on the way down and don't have a lot of top end quality or or it's aging, um, we, we should be getting out of the blocks really well and beating them quite comfortably. So I, I you know even if we don't beat them by you know 100 points, if we're five goals up a quarter time, I think that'd be a really good sign. Uh, probably the other thing for me is with, with Schultz out, I want to see how our forward structure works. So um, obviously Westhoff will play forward again. Hopefully Butcher can work himself into the game. It'll be interesting to see whether we pick another tall forward, whether it be Shaw or Harvey, to um, to come in to, to keep the same structure, obviously with the structure being very important to how we play. Yep. I think we will. I think uh, Shaw might get another go. He's been talked up all pre-season. I think he'll get another chance to impress. And uh, and hopefully have a good game. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are very heavily on the road to road uh, to round one. Um, obviously, there'll be a few changes. A couple of players will have to drop out to get to the twenty-two players. Um, who do you think is going to drop out of our sort of team that uh, that played last night? Um, look, I. I'm just doing the uh, you know earlier today I did my uh, my best 22 uh, things might be discussed and probably 
you know, Paul Stewart might struggle to make make the team. He's um he's someone who does his job but doesn't probably he, he's kind of you know jack of all trades, kind of seven out of ten across the board without actually um you know excelling at anything. Um, so he can come in and play a role, but you'd hope if we're fully fit, he he might struggle to get into the team because there's just better players on every line. Um, so he could drop out. Um, Young will be around the mark. I think he will. Um, you know, I, I think when he does play, I think he can he can do a job for us again. But whether he's in the team at the start, I'm not sure. So we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, I think those two possibly could drop out from where we are. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. I've just just have a look at. I'm just opening up now. The team I put up. Um, I guess the main one might yeah. be Impy. Does he play? Does he not play? I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, not not off the start. Um, probably not contributing. Um, ac- you know, across four quarters enough yet. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, yeah. Look, I mean, he, he'll be good. I, I don't think there's any problem if he does come in. But I just think we've got better players on that line, and you know, we're we're going into a year where we expect to win the you know the the fifty fifty games. And we probably can't be giving him too much of a go, so hopefully we play well for the Ma- well for the Magpies and um and put pressure on the guys playing off half back in the team. Yeah, I want to see him start at the Maggies and, and try and win a lot of bowl and and force his way into the side as opposed to sort of coming in as a sub uh, for the first couple of rounds of the season that sort of thing. Yeah, I agree. I think you know maybe he'll be competing with someone like a, a Calhoun or something like that. Yeah. And I think at this stage you'd probably take Calhoun Calhoun's ahead well of him. Ahead. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, so you think? Oh, hopefully, he can play well for the Maggies and carve up in the SNFL. Um, you know, if we are, if we do keep relatively injury free, uh, we do have a very good side at SNFL level. So, hopefully, they can they can dominate and keep a lot of pressure on the guys above them. Yep. What about Dom? Um, I don't have him in the side at the moment. Although he was quite good last night, I felt uh, he just contributed. Um, again, it's another case of, you know, while he can contribute at AFL level, he probably doesn't have the strings to his bow anymore. Uh, and, you know, through the midfield and the halfback, there's better players that, you know, have, have more more skills at the moment and are probably fitter and can run harder. So um, I, I wouldn't have a problem if he was in the side. Uh, he's good depth to have, but I think he'll be struggling to make the side in round one. Yeah. Rick, what do you think, mate? Oh, I think, uh, yeah, Jarman MP would be on the block. I reckon Brent Renouf would be... Um, Probably in a bit of trouble too. I don't think we'd take two major Rutman in there, especially if uh, Trengrove uh, Trengrove is back in the side. Uh, I'd want to see Matt White having some more influence. Otherwise, I reckon he might have to make way. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would be that would be another one. I'd suggest maybe um, uh, you know Aaron Young, Andrew Moore, uh, Paul Stewart. Uh, they'll probably be the other boys that that might miss out come round one. And obviously uh, it all depends on uh, whether uh, Bobby Carlisle and uh, Jackson Trengrove uh, Gove are available in relation to uh, the other two boys that were playing those defensive roles. Um, yep. But yep. they would probably be my main targets. I think everyone else will, will keep their spots uh, like we uh, addressed earlier. I think John Butcher has to stay in the side from a structure perspective. But yeah, if we get Jackson back, Plus Bobby, I'd say Renouf would probably drop out, and we wouldn't carry the two Rutman. Yeah. Yep. Well, Renouf's on the uh, on the rookie list anyway, so very true. He's not uh, he's not going to get a go, but I think. Um, well, he could be promoted if Pops... with Redden, couldn't he? Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. I think I think we'll probably, given Loby's success as a sole Ruckman last year, I think we'll go in with that same that same outlook and hope that uh, that someone can give him a chop out in the ruck. Yeah. Yeah, look, I think when Redden comes back, uh, if Butcher's really not performing, you can maybe play Redden and Loby and play one of them as a forward because they're probably a little bit more uh, advanced than, than Shaw, or, uh, Shaw or Harvey so far. Um, they need to be holding their marks, especially Loby after last night. We need to hold a few more marks if he's playing up forward. But I would say, you know, we should be aiming most of the season to be playing one Ruckman, which would be a bit tough on Redden, but, uh, you know, assuming he gets fit and is playing well. But Loby just showed so much last year that he, that he can carry the Ruck by himself and he doesn't really need help. So, yeah, I'd be happy to see us going like that. Well, I do agree with uh, with what you've both said. I think uh, we definitely need to start with three uh, key forwards. Um, and I would like to see a Trengove, Carlisle, Homsch uh, key defensive unit as well. Yeah. Um, Again, I think at times last year we went in a little bit undersized in defence and, and it really cost us a couple of games late in the year, I think. Um, yep. So I, I would like to see Homsch get that 
get that chance to really cement himself in the side, and I definitely think he's good enough to do that. Yeah, I, th- I think with Homsch, similar to Jonas, uh, he, he can play tall or small. So I, I'd rather have him in the side with Trengove and Carlisle. Trengove obviously taking their, their bigger player. If we had him last night, he would have been able to take Danaher. Um, yep. But I think Homsch, given the way, you know, his versatility, um, should should stay in the side. And, and his ball use is really good coming off halfback as well. Definitely, definitely. Look, I'm going to pull you guys up on this one, though. Um, look, I mean, our defensive three tools are Jonas. Uh, Trengove and Carlisle, if they're all playing, um, I can't see why we would carry Homsch on the bench uh, to rotate with them. I'd probably uh, prefer to give uh, Cleary his spot because at least with Cleary, with his endurance uh, and his height, um, at least he could be more of a swingman for us and he'd have the ability to maybe play forward, midfield and defence, whereas I don't think uh, young Jack would have that. So if we had all our key yeah. pillars in defence available... I'd probably go for Cleary over Homsch myself. Yes, yeah, it's, it's an interesting point you raise. Yeah. I don't disagree with that. I think um, the only thing I would say is that I don't really see Jonas as a key defender. And whilst he can, he's proven he can do that role, I think he's better off playing on smaller forwards um, as opposed to taking someone like Danaher last night where he was giving up something ridiculous like 17 centimetres to him. Um, I think he's better off playing on those sort of mid, middle small forwards um, and having Homsch play on the taller guys, I think. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I tend to agree with, with Macca there. I think uh, I'd probably prefer that Jonas wasn't giving away 15, 20 centimetres, although he's done it well in the past. Um, someone like Danaher is probably a little bit taller, a better player of Danaher's size. Um, Jonas might struggle with a little bit, although his body works quite good, and that's how he beats those players. But... Um, yeah, I think he, you'd hope he'd play on a mid-size or a small. Um, Homsch can probably play on a third tall. But again, it, it depends the, the kind of team we're coming up against. Trengo, Trengove in the side and uh, Jonas wouldn't be playing on Danaher. No, really. that's right. No, yeah. absolutely. No. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's not a bad point. Uh, and uh, Cleary really impressed me last night. Um, just so composed on the ball. Um, you know, you think a few years ago, the, the kind of, you know, we we're basically covering our eyes every time we kick it out of defence with guys like Chaplin and even Carlisle at the time just not hitting targets. Uh, it was really good to see last night. Both those young guys, young key, key tools, um, just hitting targets every time and being really, really composed. He reminds me a lot of Paul Stewart, Cleary. He has that same sort of body size and... He, he's tall, but he doesn't really look that tall, sort of thing. He, he can. He's another that I think, similar to Jonas, he'll, he'll be better off playing on more of a mid-sized player than a than a true key forward. I think going forward. Yeah, I'll, we'll see how he plays with that. But he probably doesn't play as tall as some other players do. I think I think Carlisle plays a bit taller than he is. I think yeah. um, I think Cleary at this stage. I mean, I, I probably haven't seen enough of him to to be sure either way of, of him and Homsch, but. You know, if they get some game time this year, we'll be able to see how they go on the bigger guys. Yeah, oh, boys. I was so, I was hoping for an argument there, fellas. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 roll, you guys rolled over too easy. <laughs> All right, look, I, too I, nice. I, I easy. think I, I probably got I probably got Homsch ahead of Cleary at this stage, just on on seniority kind of thing, just that he's had a bit more more experience. But you know, Cleary last night was really good. Uh, yeah, it's hard to argue against um, that he do a good job uh, if he got on the side. So. There's not too much between them. I think the good thing is that we've clearly got a lot of options, which yeah. we haven't had in the past few years. And I think uh, there's no doubt if, if Cleary does come in, he'll do a good job. Same with Homsch, same with Jonas, you know, same with guys like Pittard. I think they're all going to get better um, as the year goes on. Yeah. Yeah, I think, if you, I mean, you look last year when we lost Trengove, we, we struggled a lot with that. Uh, I feel like if the same thing happened this year, here, if we lost one of our best two uh, key position defenders, we probably wouldn't suffer as much because Cleary and Hobbs have come on uh, come along a long uh, a long way. So um, yeah, that's probably probably our position of most depth after maybe the midfield. Um, in terms of depth, I'm only really worried about key forwards at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Like Dermy said, take shares on us for 2015. I think that's going to be when we're at our mature peak as a side. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, we'll, obviously, Corns will still be playing. Um, Schultz will still be uh, still be playing well, and just a few extra, you know, an extra year or two in our um, uh, our, our young guns uh, will hopefully hopefully put us right up there. Exactly, but I'm not riding off 2014. No, no. I mean, the, the only teams who I would be, you know, I would probably understand if we lost two would be Frio and 
uh, Hawthorne, any other team, I think, on our day, if we play well, we can beat those teams. You know, we, we get off to those good starts. Uh, we know we've got the fitness to run out games. Uh, we've just got to just got to bring it for four quarters. And I don't think there's really any other sides apart from those two that, that should be able to knock us off if we're abs- at our absolute best. Yeah. So um, outside of Port, who would be your – who's your bolters for this year? Uh, mine's going to be, I think, North Melbourne. I think Lee Tudor is going to make a massive difference to uh, uh, North Melbourne this year. Yeah, absolutely. I think North are the, probably the one side that, um, that are going to – uh, uh, really charge up the table. They had obviously a lot of close losses. And I think they're uh, similar to us, where they'll, they'll develop as a side. They've got a lot of good young players who who will improve. And all they really have to improve is you know one or two percent, and they'll they'll get those wins that will put them up into the you know you know fifth you know maybe like fourth, fifth, sixth type range. Um, yeah, so, so they're really good. The other sides that are around the mark, Adelaide, um, Essendon, obviously have to come back in. Um, I think Essendon will make the eight. I think you know they're, they're around the mark. Although we did um, we did beat them pretty well last night. I don't really rate rate West Coast at all, and I don't really rate Carlton. So um, I just don't think they've probably got the the depth across the ground to be really uh, really competing with the top teams. Yeah, well, I agree with North Melbourne. I think they'll probably make the finals. I think Richmond will jump up into the top four. Um, not sold on Essendon. I think if they get to, they're very very thin up forward. Um, and if someone like Danny Hur goes down or doesn't sort of develop as they hope, I think they're going to struggle to kick goals, despite the fact that their midfield is very, very good and their defence is more than solid. Yep. Um, I think, I think losing uh, Gumbleton yeah. and Cramery will yeah. really, really hurt them. Absolutely. Mm. They, they do need... Uh, I mean, Hurley's been talked about for a long time as a, you know, their, their answer up forward, and obviously they've got Danaher, Danaher now. Um, I, I haven't really seen enough from Hurley to think he's going to be a superstar, but obviously they, no. you know, Essendon fans talk him up. Um, yeah. So it would be interesting to see how they go. They were obviously very good last year, uh, and they just run and run and run, and maybe they, they looked a bit weaker against a side like us who can, who can go with them, uh, whereas there might be some other sides they can run over. All right. Well, I guess that's it for, the, for this evening. Um, El Scorcho, thanks for coming on. No, thank you very much for having me. It's been really good. Uh, yeah, thank great you to have much. you on. Thank you. Yeah, you Rick, did well, mate. Thank you. As always. Pleasure. Where are your, where are your fishing tips? Oh, well, I, I did my fishing today on uh, Facebook, apparently. So, uh, <laughs> and, I caught a lot of, and I caught a lot of trout. So, uh, and I even had a few regulars uh, appear to spit the dummy and... Uh, and leave our Facebook page. Hopefully they come back. We all, we all love you, uh, uh, Matt Tarrant. And um, I would <laughs> say with my fishing tips, the one fishing tip I've got is um, remember, fellows uh, and women, uh, that the crab limit has been reduced to 20 crabs. So if you do like your crabbing, don't go over the limit of 20 because we've got to protect our uh, fish stocks. That is great to know because I'm actually going crabbing tomorrow. Yeah, well... Only take your 20 and enjoy the crabs because I over the uh, Christmas break, guy's walking in off the beach uh, up near uh, uh, Drossen there and, of course, he's got his esky and I was having a chat to him. How many did you get? 28. Oh, really? Did you know the limit's 20? No, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, enjoy the crabs, mate. They'll be beautiful, no, no doubt. Will do. Until next time. <laughs>